if you could just lay out the rationale for this, why did you want to test the maglutide in the setting of intensive lifestyle therapy? Well, we wanted to give people a large dose of lifestyle modification and to see how much weight semaglutide could add on top of that. Very often with tests of medications, the lifestyle intervention is pretty moderate. People maybe get a, a monthly counseling session and the group that gets placebo and monthly counseling just loses 2 to 3% of their weight. And we thought, well, let's see if we give people a more aggressive behavioral counseling program um, and can lose six, seven, eight percent of their weight, how much additional weight loss can semaglutide add on top of that? So that was the rationale for it. And how did the weight loss that you got with semaglutide compare to what you would get with a currently approved obesity medication plus lifestyle treatment? Uh, weight loss with semaglutide as compared to currently approved medications was about double the effectiveness of most medications. So if you look at it in relationship to uh, medications such as uh, Contrave, which is um, naltrexon bupropion, that produces a five kilogram weight loss. And in this case, um, semaglutide is producing a weight loss upwards of you know, 16 kilograms or so. So it's it's triple the weight losses of many of these medications. Probably the most effective medication next to semaglutide is Qsemia. That's fentramine and topiramate. It's not approved in, in many countries in the European Union. I'm not sure if it's approved in uh, Great Britain or not. It It is the uh, most successful weight loss. It produces about an 8.8 kilogram loss greater than placebo, uh, but you can see that semaglutide is clearly more effective than it is as well. Semaglutide produced a absolute weight of 16.8 kilograms. How does that compare to liraglutide? Uh, again, it's, it's substantially greater than liraglutide. So liraglutide produces a weight loss um, 5.3 kilograms greater than placebo and a total weight loss of about 8 kilograms. So again, semaglutide is about twice as effective as liraglutide 3.0. I think this is really the, you know, the breakthrough in weight management that people with overweight and obesity have been waiting for. Uh, patients are excited when they can lose more than 10% of their weight. Uh, a recent survey done back in 2016 said that people would like to lose about 20% of their initial body weight. Uh, that figure actually was much higher 20 years ago. They wanted to lose 35%. And now we've got a medication that's going to take the average weight loss from 7 or 8%, uh, where very few people get to a 15% weight loss. And now this medication is going to allow about 50% of people to lose uh, 15%, and about 35% are going to lose 20% of their body weight or more. So you're going to find that people will be more satisfied with their weight loss than with just behavioral treatment or other weight loss medications. And second, and more important, is that people are going to achieve larger improvements in their health in terms of cardiometabolic risk factors. So greater improvements in their blood sugar um, and control of type 2 diabetes, greater improvements in blood pressure, will be improvements in their lipid profile, particularly triglycerides. Uh, in, in addition, if you have sleep apnea, a weight loss of 15% is really going to have an impact upon your sleep apnea, whereas a loss of 5%, uh, you may not see much change. So I think you're going to see larger weight, larger categorical weight losses. People will be happier with them. They will improve their health and their mobility, and it may make the process of losing weight just a lot easier for many people. In the JAMA paper, you were speculating about whether intensive lifestyle treatment is actually necessary for people taking semaglutide. Can you expand on that? Yeah, I think it's a good question. It may well be that semaglutide is such a robust medication that it's going to help people on average lose about 15% of weight and that you potentially don't need as much behavioral counseling to modify your food intake. So much of behavioral counseling is about recording your 
food intake and your calories of doing that daily. And part of what semaglutide does is it really remarkably decreases people's hunger, decreases cravings. We know that it decreases food intake by about 35% uh, when you show, look at people having an ad libitum lunch where they can eat as much as they want. And after they get on semaglutide, they decrease their calorie intake by about 35% on this ad libitum lunch. So I think that part of what semaglutide does is it decreases people's urge to eat, the hunger, the initiation of eating. And when you do eat, you feel full more quickly and therefore stop eating sooner and eat less food. So semaglutide may help people make the behavioral changes that we try to help them with with intensive behavioral therapy that the drug is going to make people you know, less responsive to the food environment, less vulnerable to all the ads for you know, eating high-fat, high-sugar foods. So I think that it, it does help the behavioral treatment, and you may not need as much intensive behavioral therapy as we provided in this study. Do you feel that smaglicide could be a useful treatment for people who just really struggle to engage in lifestyle therapy for whatever reason? I think it could be, and there are different reasons that people struggle with lifestyle modification. Uh, Some people will just report they're extremely food preoccupied. They're always thinking about their next meal as soon as they eat this one. And semaglutide, to my experience with the patient I treated, seems to turn down the volume of desire to eat, that background noise about I'm hungry, I'm thinking about a food. So it turns that down and people are able to sort of focus on their work and other activities rather than thinking about their next meal. It's important to realize that while semaglutide helps people with their appetite, we still obviously want people to continue to engage in physical activity. So critical that folks continue to get out there and try to walk 150 minutes, 200 minutes per week because physical activity is going to have benefits for your cardiovascular health and fitness uh, above and beyond just weight loss. So the study doesn't mean we shouldn't have people trying to modify their lifestyle, but it may be the drug will make it easier for them to modify food intake, and then they can focus even more on increasing their physical activity.